guys, it's your boy. Welcome back to another video. It is Halloween about time. Spooky season has all came to this. It is Halloween, October 31st, and I am incredibly excited. So for those of you guys who have not been following my channel and have no idea what's been going on, I watched all of the Scream movies for the first time ever this month, and I uh, did them all leading up to this day so I can make a video ranking them all amongst each other. And um, this was very, very difficult. I think that this is one of the first times ever I've watched an entire franchise of a movie. And there hasn't been a single one that I was like, wow, that one sucked. Like, I think I, I enjoyed every single one of these movies. And it is going to be insanely difficult for me to rank them amongst each other. But somehow, some way, I was able to come up with a list. So let's go ahead and dive right into this. Alrighty, coming in in dead last, but this is by no means a bad movie. We got Scream 3. Uh, personally, I think that this movie was still pretty good. Like, I very much enjoyed this movie. I really like the whole Gail Weathers with the actress who's playing Gail Weathers dynamic. I thought that was a whole lot of fun. But overall, some of the things that did not work for this movie for me, for one, there was only a singular ghost face, which I think was very ambitious at the time. I thought that it was a very bold thing to do. But um, it just overall wasn't that interesting. Supposedly, I've heard now that there was originally going to be a second ghost face and it was going to be the person who played Sydney in the movie but they kind of like switched out the plan of doing that and they made it just the director um so to me it did feel a little weird there were a couple of sequences here and there where it like really seemed like something was off about some of the other characters and I think it really seemed like one of those things where it's like they were planting seeds in case they wanted to reveal another person to be this ghost face and then they last second were like no we're just going to leave it as the one guy and um the twist with him being you know like technically Sydney's like half brother and he was trying to get like revenge because Sydney's mom wouldn't accept him really weird um the fact that he was the reason why Billy and Stu were killing people in the first movie didn't really make sense to me either so like there's a lot of things that they just randomly introduced in this movie that like is interesting but at the same time takes away from some of the other movies and some of the things that you really like about the other movies and um, overall I feel like this movie just feels the most like kind of disconnected I feel like Dewey not being like the main detective on the story is like a little weird and it's a little offsetting um the actor from Grey's Anatomy I can't remember his name right now but um the entire time when he's the detective, he just keeps asking questions that don't seem super relevant to the story. He seems, like, very mysterious. He says, like, stuff like, oh, my favorite scary movie, my life. And it's, like, really weird. He's dark and edgy for no reason. And he literally is, like, there's a killer on the loose, but he's so suspicious for no reason. And it's, like, the weirdest thing ever to me. That character choice was just odd and um there was a lot of small things like that very nitpicky things here and there that just makes this movie not as good as the rest of them but i still thought it was a very fun movie and it was very enjoyable um if you guys haven't seen the entire screen franchise i would totally recommend going and watching them and having a little marathon of them they were very fun to watch back to back to back to back like i did now coming in at number four this one in my opinion is the most unique and different from all of them but i was not a huge fan scream four um personally i think that this cast worked incredibly well i think that the person who plays kirby was very fun in this movie i feel like um the two little movie geeks who were like using new advanced technology and like were trying to make cool films and they were live streaming stuff and stuff like that was great i feel like this was a very good step in modernizing these movies i feel like with um scream five and scream six they really had to figure out how to make it match the technology of today and i feel like although scream 4 is largely like seen as kind of like the one disconnected movie from the franchise despite it not being disconnected at all um it really does a good job building a stepping stone for the future movies to kind of build in a new world of the ghost face killings with the new updated technology um and i think that some of the stuff with emma roberts was fantastic i think that that twist towards the end when she was just like it's just like the original and then she like realized but like it's actually more popular to have a lone survivor and then she kills her partner that was cool i really enjoyed that i thought that that was an incredibly smart choice i think that um everything with her twist was really interesting and i think that what what would have made this movie work for me is if it gave us an extra like five or ten minutes at the end of the movie to see the aftermath of everything that happened with it um i think that as it stands by itself it is a very fun movie and the twist with her killing her partner at the end and all of the news outlets covering the fact that she is a hero and she is like the lone survivor and she's amazing um and then we watch her get murdered in the hospital because she was trying to kill sydney um it just felt like there was a little bit missing towards the end of that movie um but other than that i thought that it was a whole lot of fun i thought that the whole like scream fest little party sequence was really really cool um i liked it i thought it was very very fun Alrighty, now here's where it gets really difficult for me. Coming in at number four, I have Scream 5. I thought that this movie was a whole lot of fun. Like I said, they were able to modernize these movies incredibly well. I thought that the opening phone sequence was a whole lot of fun. And I really like the twist of 
one of the friends from the very, very beginning of the movie, literally the friend who is a part of the opening sequence, being one of the killers at the end was pretty cool. I really liked that twist. Um, there was a couple things that kind of like, I could see coming a mile away. Like, I don't know why Jack Quaid is just one of those actors where it's like the second I saw him, I was like, well, he's one of the killers. Uh, but like, that's not at the fault of the movie at all. But um, I thought that this movie was great. I thought that the scene where Sheriff Deputy, um, that's not her name. What is it? Sh Sheriff Judy? I thought that her name was Deputy. Why did I think her name was Deputy? Sheriff Judy, the scene where she gets killed and she, like she gets trapped into like running home and like she's sprinting up to her doorway and then Scream just jumps out at her and stabs her. That was cool. That was a very fun sequence. And then what I really liked after it is that really long take where we're just following Wes around his house as he's doing like a bunch of super mundane tasks and being like a good son and like setting up plates for dinner and stuff like that. And he keeps opening up cabinets and then we can't see what's at the end. And then it's just building the suspense and then it closes it, nothing happens. And then the refrigerator, and then he's there for like a couple of minutes and then he closes it, nothing happens. And then eventually when the screen hits, it's just such a cool, satisfying sequence. I really liked the fifth movie and I really liked like all of these movies. It was really, really hard to choose a favorite, but I think that, um, the few things that really like turned me off from this one is the fact that in the like final act of this movie, Jack Quaid does not wear this ghost face mask a single time. And I feel like that part kind of throws me off a lot. Like, I really feel like that's one of the only things about it that makes it so that this one isn't as good as the next three is the fact that in the final sequence, there's no two ghost face running around. And there's not that mystery of like, who's in the other ghost face mask right now? Because Jack Quaid is doing all of the like, murders that he does he does fully in the open um but i will say i really liked what they did to return to the original movies and have ski uh Ult ulridge reprise his role as uh billy and kind of like be encouraging sam to you know defend herself i thought that that was fun i really enjoyed that now starting off our top three we got scream six um i don't know if this is an unpopular opinion to put scream six over scream five but personally in my opinion this is the scariest movie in the entire franchise there are a couple sequences in here that really get me jumpy really got my heart pumping and i really enjoyed it i was watching these movies to prepare myself for going to see a horror movie in theaters and i didn't find the majority of these scream movies very scary there were a couple sequences here and there that were a little terrifying but for the most part scream six was in my opinion one of the scariest and um scenes like where they're trying to climb across a ladder in between the two apartments and then like Ghostface just picks it up and starts rattling it that's terrifying one of the opening sequences where um the guy who's pretending to be Ghostface and going around killing people is on the phone with who he thinks is his roommate and he thinks he's just fucking with him and uh he's on the phone and they're playing the hot or cold game and then uh he's opens up the fridge and he sees his roommate decapitated and he's just like in pieces right there that was gory. That was epic. That was a great way to set the pace for this movie. And I think that this one has one of the best twists. I think that having the um, help, help, helpless roommate be one of the killers was genius. And um, I think that the roommate, who seems like a very like dumb, innocent, dorky, lovable kind of guy, being one of the killers was great. And uh, I love everything they did with the whole like core four. And um, I think one of the last things I need to mention here, the like set that they have where it has like all the paraphernalia from all of the movies and they're like oh my god this person was a diehard Ghostface fan um that was cool i really loved the final set all righty now coming in at number two we have the original scream movie uh personally i think that this movie is a whole lot of fun i really love the opening uh call with drew barrymore on the phone i think that that entire sequence is really really fun i think that um, doing that was brilliant. Obviously, I wasn't around in the time where, you know, I was a moviegoer and I was like, oh my god, expecting Drew Barrymore, this really big celebrity, to be in this horror movie and probably be the main character and then her getting killed off immediately. Um, this movie kind of set precedence for what a horror movie could be and it really changed the game for a lot of thrillers and slasher movies in Hollywood. And I feel like still to this day, it has so much iconic things that we still use in film to this day and i absolutely loved it i thought that it was absolutely great i think that this still has the best ghost face killer i think that billy and Stu have not been beaten at all i think that Stu is one of the most fun characters and i think that he's one of the best cases in like any movies that i personally have seen where they create like a total wild card character a character who likes to do something just because it's fun because why because he feels like it like there's no motivation behind it he just wants to do it and that is his motivation. And I think that it's great. I think that uh, Matthew Lillard and uh, Ski Oldridge play the villains perfect perfectly. Um, and I think that 
as somebody who loved love movies from this time like i am a big fan of rom-coms and all the rom-coms that were coming out around the same time as these movies were fantastic and you can feel that teen love in this movie and i absolutely love it to death gail weathers has an interesting character um arc in this movie dewey has a great character arc in this movie and um randy is so much fun i feel like this movie really did a great job setting the groundwork for the fact that they know that they're in a horror movie they have a general idea of what's going on in their world that they're living in and um i just love how he's like explaining the rules of these things and the rules that he establishes actually like go through with the movies like you can watch each of the movies with his set of rules and like they almost all are true and it's fantastic i very very much love the first scream movie and i think that i will be watching it every halloween season it was great Alrighty, and finally coming in first place, in my opinion, the best Scream movie is Scream 2. I gotta give it to them. I really like the fact that they turn it into a, more of a college atmosphere. I really like the way that they're showing Sydney dealing with her PTSD. And in my opinion, this is the scariest of all the Scream movies. I feel like Scream 6 had a lot of very scary moments, but it's mostly because of the gore and it's definitely because of the advancement in technology. But something that I liked about this movie is this came out back in the day. They couldn't do so much with the gore stuff. They had to be limited to like visual effects, like not visual effects. Is it visual effects? They had to be limited by the technology that they had at the time. And they were still able to pull off some of the like most gruesome sequences that I've seen. Um, I really like some of the sequences where she's up on the stage and she's rehearsing for her musical. And then all of a sudden she gets those flashes of PTSD and then, oh my God, everybody who's around her is just ghost face and they're coming at her with the knife and it's just so interesting i love the opening sequence where they're at a movie theater and that terrifying sequence of like everybody there is just joking around having fun but they were doing something that seemed like it was just a part of the act and a part of the movie that they don't even realize that they are literally watching somebody get killed in front of them i love how dark this movie was i think that they did a really good job of really upping the antes here and it was great it was really really good i think that some of the sequences are very terrifying. Like I mentioned, I think that this is the scariest one. Everything with the car sequence where they're being taken into protective custody or whatever, and then the two police officers are driving her away, and then Ghostface comes in, kills both of them, and they're trapped in the backseat as Ghostface starts to drive off with them, and then he drives into the pole, and it's like final destination with the like poles just completely impaling the police officer. That is one of the most gruesome things. I think I've ever seen in a film and that was done back in the day like they couldn't use CGI to make that happen it was brutal to watch and I absolutely loved it and then following that right after that we have the sequence where they have to crawl over Ghostface to get out of the car and it's just so tense and it's like a like five minute scene of Sydney having to climb around and just go slightly over him and then oh my god the twist at the end of who the killers were Personally, I think this is by far the most shocking one. I do kind of feel like it's slightly a cop-out, though, because the one with um, it being, what's it called, Billy's mom? I don't know if Billy's mom is really shown that much in the movie before she's revealed as the killer. And when they, like, reveal that she's the killer, it's one of the few times where I'm just like, what? Because one of my least favorite things about whodunits is when they don't really give you the clues to figure stuff out before it happens. It just happens, and then you're like, oh, well, yeah, that makes sense. But, like, that was the only one where I was kind of like, okay. But, like, she was terrifying. That actress did fantastic. And um, one of the last things that I wanted to say here is I absolutely love the last sequence with Sydney's boyfriend being alive where the ghost face is convincing Sydney that her boyfriend was his other partner and it was the other guy going around in the ghost mask. And that just, like self-doubt and like the crippling like being unsure of herself was just so well acted and oh my god scream 2 was fantastic i absolutely loved that movie and like i said i would recommend going and watching all of them but if you only have time to watch some of them uh maybe watch the first two and then watch the fifth one and the sixth one i absolutely loved all these movies though and i definitely had a hard time ranking these but if you guys want to leave your rankings down below in the comments i love having discussions about these movies if you have any disagreements with me feel free to let me know i honestly love talking about movies so i would be down to have any discussions like i said but yeah that was it for this video guys i love and appreciate you guys so much for coming by and checking it out if you're still watching at this point you're amazing you're a rock star i love you um but yeah if you liked it feel free to like and subscribe and i will hopefully see you guys in the next one peace out bow 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 he wanted me to go, but first I did this. We planned a day, and then we did this. Want to be in love with the girls with the kisses. Don't give a damn, I'll rid this. I like this when I run the distance. I run the five kids for Ulysses. I want to live within the business. Buy more than what's on the clearances. 
You're getting banned because I know you're a physicist. I want to deny this shit. I'm unlimited.